Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So to solve the problem, sum of square numbers. This is actually a really good one and we're gonna go through a few solutions. So the idea is that we're given some non-negative integer c and we want to satisfy this equation a squared plus b squared is equal to c. We want to find if there are two integers a and b that satisfy this. Now a and b don't have to be different, they could be the same. So for example, if we had something like two squared plus two squared, uh, that's gonna be equal to eight. So in other words, given the parameter C, which is eight, we do have two integers that satisfy this equation. So we would return true in this case. If we don't, for something like nine, I don't think there are gonna be two integers that satisfy it. So in that case, we would return false. So how do we solve this problem? Well, the simplest is gonna be with the brute force. Now, how would you even try the brute force though? Like if you were gonna try every combination of A and B to solve this problem, what are gonna be the constraints on A and B? Well, at the very least, if we're trying to build some non-negative integer C, we can assume that A and B are definitely gonna be greater than or equal to zero. It could technically be equal to zero because a non-negative integer, what if C is equal to zero? Well, A and B squared are each gonna be zero. In that case, they do satisfy that equation. So A and B are allowed to be zero but they're never gonna exceed the result C. So I'm also gonna put a less than or equal here because technically, even in that example previously where C is equal to zero, these two are gonna be equal to zero. So they could be equal to C, but they're never gonna be greater than C because if you had two numbers greater than C, well, the sum of those is probably also going to be greater than C. So why would you need to check those numbers? In a brute force solution, this is going to work. Now, the time complexity of like a nested loop solution, checking every combination of A and B this way is going to be, let's say, C squared, where C is obviously just C itself. We can actually get this solution down to big O of C. You might be wondering how, but it's actually very basic math. We don't actually wanna check that A and B are less than or equal to C. We want to make sure that A squared and B squared, each of those is less than or equal to C. In other words, if we take the square root of both, we find that we just want A and B to be less than or equal to the square root of C. And the reason for that is if A was equal to the square root of C, A squared is literally equal to C, and so obviously in that case, a squared plus b squared is either gonna be equal to c or it's gonna be greater than c. So at that point, we know we can stop. So this is a closer terminating condition for our loop. With this inequality, we get the time complexity of big O of c. But we can actually do even better than that. Consider this for a second. We have an outer loop where a is gonna iterate from zero up until the square root of c inclusive. We'll have a nested loop in the brute force for b in that exact same range, right? So this is like a square root of c and this is also square root of c. So you multiply those together and you get the big O time complexity of just a big O of c. So how can we optimize this a little bit more? Well, the idea is this we're gonna be computing, we're gonna be going through every number from zero to the square root of C. And then in here, what we're gonna check is something like this, A times B plus B times B is equal to C. This is like the equation we're gonna check. So in other words, A is already sort of fixed, right? A is fixed and with this inner loop, we're gonna try every possible B and check if the equation is satisfied. A better way to do this would be to go through this loop, move it somewhere outside so we can literally compute every single number from zero to square root of C and get the square of it and throw all of those into something like a hash set. And then once we've done that a single time, then we can solve this equation here for B itself, which is gonna look something like this, C minus A squared. That's what B is gonna be equal to. And then we take the square root of this side and then that's what B is. So in other words, we're looking for this target number. And if this number exists in our hash set, which we can check very efficiently, then we have the like solution. We will know that we satisfied the equation. If it doesn't exist, then we know it, it doesn't. So then we can move to the next iteration of A. 
We don't have to check every single possible B. We just have to solve the equation and then check the hash set. So this way, actually, we can get the time complexity of this just down to one loop over here and replace this with a hash set. And then the overall time complexity will actually be the square root of C. Now that is going to require some extra space. So we're going to need to take every number from zero to the square root of C, square it, and then add it to a hash set. So the space complexity of this solution is going to be this. I'm going to code this solution up for you right now. You're going to realize there's actually just one problem with this solution. So like I said, the first thing I want to do is just get the square of every number from zero up until the square root of it. We're going to go for I in range from zero, and then we're going to take math. I think I actually can just do square root of C, and I'm going to add one to it because with Python, this is not inclusive necessarily. So with this A, we'll actually go up until the square root of C. And uh, we also just want to make sure we're dealing with integers. So I'm actually going to wrap this in an int conversion. Okay, now we're ready. So now we're just going to take every single candidate I, we're going to square it. So I times I, and then we're going to take that and add it to the square root set like this. Now we've computed all the squares from zero up until the uh, square root of C, and now we can do the loop solution more efficiently. So I'm gonna start with A here, and for the looping, this is actually the easiest way to write the loop. Instead of computing the square root of A and making sure that like the square root of A is less than C, we can actually just take the square of A, A times A, and check that that is less than or equal to C. So it's the same inequality, like if I were to square root this side, we'd have A here and we'd have the square root of C. It's just that it's a little bit easier and more precise to compute this without actually calling square root because then we get into like decimal territory. So now we want B. We want to know what B is and we're going to call that the target. We can compute that by taking C minus uh, A times A. And so this is actually not B, this is B squared, and that's fine because that's what we want to check. Does that exist in the hash set? This is the number, and we want to know if it's in the hash set like this, square roots. And if it is, we can return true. We're done at that point. If it is not, then we're going to check the next candidate for A. So we're going to do A plus one, and then out here, we're going to return false. So now let's try this. And I had a typo, so this should, there should not be an S here. I'm sorry, that's square root, not square roots. Okay, and that solution actually does work. Last time I tried it, it actually did not. It gave me a memory limit exceeded error. So the motivation, I guess, is still the same because it shows that we're pretty low on the memory for this solution. And the idea is that we can actually implement a solution with the same time complexity, just more memory efficient. Let me show that to you now. So the motivation for this solution is actually going to be leak code 167. It's two sum two. And that is a very, very good problem for two pointers. It teaches you a lot. And so that's what we're going to use for this problem. Just like how we kind of pre-computed all the squares from zero up until the square root of C, we're going to do that once again, actually. So let's consider if C was 10, for example. We're going to go through every number from zero up until the square root of C. In this case, the square root of C is something like three point something something. So we want to stop at three. So we're going to compute the square root of every number from zero or not the square root, the square from zero to three. So we're going to have zero squared. We're going to have one squared. We're going to have two squared and we're going to have three squared. So that looks like an array of zero, one, four, and nine. Think of this array as like x squared. If we can find two numbers in this array, they could be the same number or they could be different numbers. And if those two numbers sum up to the value c, we have solved the problem. So in other words, this is literally the problem to sum two, leak code 167. It's the exact same problem now. So it's going to have the exact same solution, which is a two pointer solution. This is pretty much what we were running the brute force on when we were trying every possible pair. But there is an optimal solution to this, which starts one pointer on one side and the other pointer on the other side. So now either these two numbers summed up together are going to be the target 
This time they're not. So what should we do? Should we take this pointer and move it down here? That would make the sum smaller because we're taking a nine and turning it into a four. Or should we take this pointer and move it to the right? It would make the sum bigger. It might make it too big, who knows, but it would move us closer to the target. So we're gonna do that. So that's the solution to this problem. If our sum is too small, we're gonna take the left pointer and increase it. It's gonna be shifted over here. And so now we have actually found the solution. One plus nine is equal to 10. So there is a solution and we can return true. It could have been possible though that our, let's say our sum was actually equal to 11. Our target is equal to 11. So in that case, this would have still been too small. We would have tried to shift this pointer again and we would now be over here, four plus nine. Now it's too big, so we're gonna try to make it smaller. We're gonna try to take this pointer and then shift it the other way. Now it's gonna be too small and the pointers have met each other, so we've exhausted every possibility. The time complexity of this solution is also gonna be square root of C, because that's the length of this array, and we're not actually gonna have this array in memory. So that is a very important point. We're gonna have the indexes of this array. It's gonna look something like this, zero, one, two, three. We're gonna have left pointer initially be zero. We're gonna have right pointer initially be three. Obviously we can take an index and compute the value, the square of it very easily. That's why we don't need this array in memory. When we shift the pointer, we're just gonna either gonna be incrementing the left pointer or decrementing the right pointer. So this solution works. If that's all you care about, you can jump to the coding part. But let me just briefly explain why it works, a little bit of the intuition. Suppose this is our remaining set of elements. It could have been possible that there were more elements over here and more elements on the other side, but let's say this is our remaining set of elements. We want to find the two elements that sum up to C. Well, like we learned earlier, if these two elements do not sum up to C, obviously we wanna increase the sum to get closer to C. We know for sure that no matter where we move this right pointer, whether we pick this one, this one, or this one, no matter where we move it, if we have this left element, it's never gonna sum up to C because this is the largest element we have from these pool of elements. So obviously if nine plus zero is not C, then none of the other elements is gonna be C. So that tells us that we do not need to consider this element anymore. So that's why we take this pointer and then shift it to the right. We've guaranteed we do not need that element. Now, suppose this, instead of being a one, it was actually a two, just to make this example more interesting. We would try these two numbers, nine plus two, sum them together, and they're actually larger than the target, larger than C. So at this point, we know for sure there's never going to be an element that matches with nine because we just saw an element that was too small and now we found an element that was too big. If an element actually existed, it would have been in between those two numbers because as you kind of have noticed, this array is sorted. That's important. That's the only reason we can run this two pointer technique. This array is sorted. So since neither of those numbers summed up with nine, we can rule out nine as well. So that's a little bit of the intuition of why this works. It's kind of a proof by contradiction, but I think we've spent enough time on this that now let's code it up. So I'm gonna have two pointers left and right. Left is gonna be at zero, right is gonna be at the square root of C. So we're gonna take the square root of it and we're gonna convert it into an integer. So that will round it down if it is not an integer. So now let's check while left has not met or crossed the right pointer, or rather like they haven't crossed each other because if they've met, we can continue. Then we want to know does left squared plus right squared equal the target that we're looking for. So I'm gonna set this equal to total and I'm gonna check if the total is greater than C else if the total is less than C, else the total is equal to C, that's when we return true. Otherwise we can return false outside of the loop. Now here, if the total is too big, then we want to make the total smaller. We can take our right pointer and shift it the other way because the right pointer has the maximal element. So if we shift it to the left, we are decreasing that. And here we can take the left pointer and actually increment that so that we can make our sum a little bit bigger. So. That's the general idea, let's run this now. And as you can see, it's definitely the most optimal and space efficient solution. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.